Welcome to episode 12 of URI Just Getting Started. Uh, you're live from Croatia. It's very exciting for you uh, to be playing over there, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been fun. I actually started the year in Slovenia, um, and then I left, I left December 1st and came here. First of all, how cool is your name? You know, four is almost as cool as Orient Outerbridge, who was a former guest. I got a great name for our kids. A real original. You want to hear what it is? Eh? You ready? Yeah. <laughs> what is that, sign language? Seven. Seven Costanza. You're serious? Yeah. It's a beautiful name for a boy or a girl. Especially a girl or a boy. I don't think so. Well, you don't like the name? It's not a name. It's a number. I know. It's Mickey Mantle's number. Okay, that's funny. How close am I? Did I nail it? Um, I'm actually, I'm, my name is Ford because I'm Patrick the Fourth. Oh, wow. I thought I had something going there. Yeah, actually you're spot on with, with the Luke Murray, uh, with the Luke Murray hypothesis. He actually recruited me um, when I transferred to Towson after my freshman year. Um, him and Coach Scary were a big were a big part of of my recruitment there, uh, and when I decided that I wanted to transfer as a graduate student, he was one of the first people that reached out. Um, him and then you know Coach Carr and Coach Hurley, um, but yeah, I mean you're I mean you're pretty accurate. I know they you know a lot of a lot of like my recruitment like our talks were about you know they were building something. They obviously had gotten progressively better from you know what they've been in the past uh with you know having ec and jared and hassan you know guys like that and then you know they really struggled i guess the year before uh from the three-point line um i think at that time i've been a career 40 percent maybe a little bit more uh percent from three um you know with guys like that and then you know they had karan uh, Jarvis Garrett, who's actually here in Croatia. Um, that was a big, that was like a big need that they had that I could fill. Um, and, you know, when you look at those names of the guys that are on that team, had everything aligned, you know, injuries is a part of sports, but had everything worked itself out, I think we would have been, you know, an NCAA tournament team, which was the plan. And, you know, more so than that, a team that could probably win some games. But look, there's so much in here. So I'm, I'm saying, let's get to meet uh, Warren McGlynn. And, you know, I know you're from Pennsylvania. You went to Vermont. Um, you're a shoot first point guard. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, that's very accurate. Uh, also, you know, the foul shooting, I had no idea you were ranked eighth in the nation for foul shooting historically this isn't just one season that's a pretty big deal um, yeah yeah I've always been able to shoot I've always been able to make free throws um I've shot it at a really high percentage my entire career I think I think Rhode Island my year my year Rhode Island was the lowest it it ever was I think I was I might have been below 90 percent that year I love it honestly I've loved every year um that I've been able to play you know there's not many people that you know get a chance to you know I have friends that wanted to play and couldn't play one year you know I've been blessed to you know to play all over the world you know for six straight years uh this year's this year's a lot easier last year when I was in Portugal we were in that sort of lockdown with COVID because of you know how bad the you know the cases were spiking uh this year's a lot different um we have fans now they actually just limited it to 20% capacity, which is, which is unfortunate because the city I'm in, we actually get a very great pool of fans. You know, they love basketball here. They're really passionate. Um, I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. Like the, the country itself is beautiful. Um, and the, I mean, the basketball, they, they play really good basketball here. It's really respected. So, um, you know, I'm enjoying my time here this year. I hear you're going to get together with Jarvis. Uh, I got to know Jarvis a little bit, and uh, 
I've invited him on the show. He'll go when he's uh, ready to, but uh, he's had quite a career too. So looking forward to seeing uh, Jarvis. Yeah, I actually just, I actually just saw him uh, last, last month, maybe, maybe a month and a half ago, we played against each other. Um, so uh, thankfully his team got there like three hours before the game, which is very uncommon. So we had, you know, some extra time to catch up. Um, but, you know, it's, I, you know, I saw EC last year in Portugal um, and then I saw Jarvis this year. So it's really cool to see guys that, you know, you played in college against, you know, all the way across the world in a different country. Um, it's definitely a unique experience that I don't know how many colleges can say that, you know, they have guys play against each other, you know, after they graduate. Yeah. Uh, you're very lucky to uh, have teammates that you play against, that you had a strong relationships with. EC is by far more than just an excellent basketball player. I, does he still want to be in uh, broadcasting at some point? He did a few games for a few minutes. Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, EC's, EC's just such an awesome human being. I mean, so was Jarvis. Um, EC's, uh, EC's in Iceland right now, uh, but I'm not sure. Yeah, he's playing in Iceland now. I'm not entirely sure what his plans are after uh, he's done playing, but he's having a really good year uh, in Iceland. I'm so happy for him. Uh, that was such a tragic thing. I've never heard of anything where you I'm watching the game on my laptop uh, during your first season and only season at Rhode Island and uh, he gets that ACL injury and I'm like, please get up not just as a fan but as a, a person humanity wise I mean, what was that like for you I mean you must have been in uh, you know I've had teammates get injured before I mean it's just the nature of sports that one was was different um one, one because you care about him as, as a person, right? Obviously, he's he walks in in every room. He's always happy. He's always joking around with everybody. Um, but I didn't know. Obviously, with only being there for a year, you didn't see the impact that he that he had on the basketball community. You know, his teammates. You know, the day after when when we knew he tore his ACL, we didn't even practice. We sat in the locker room and Coach Hurley. Coach Hurley came in and talked about, uh, you know, that he had torn his ACL. He was going to be out for the year. I'd never been in – I don't know if I'd ever been in a more depressing situation to see just how deeply it impacted everybody from the coaches, the players. I mean, it was it was horrible. But, you know, credit to him. He's one of the most resilient people I've ever met. You know, most people would have just – giving it up and he's so competitive you know you don't see a lot of guys bounce back and you know especially bounce back and play you know he played in the g league he's played all over the place so um but that injury was definitely different how you know not knowing hurley personally but knowing hurley you know, his character and his work ethic how to cancel practice that couldn't be easy for him even with the terrible uh, news and his close relationship with EC. Dan Hurley. Yeah, I'm yeah, I mean I don't I don't know how many people know that, but I mean it's you know it's different. He, you know, Coach Hurley treated everybody like family, you know, and he I mean he meant that, you know, somebody goes down with an injury like that, especially EC who was kind of there for like that whole building process and starting that foundation of what, you know, Rhode Island basketball was supposed to be and getting them back to winning. And, you know, it was really, it was really difficult, you know, to see how much that impacted everybody. Um, you know, especially coach Hurley, you know, he, he definitely was, you know, he definitely was affected by it. Um, so, I mean, that was, that was horrible, but, you know, EC's having, a, you know, a great professional career and, you know, he's going to do great things after that. So, you know, really happy. I'd like to hear more about him because he's, He's such a fan favorite. You transferred to Towson, and uh, it's a really good program. I think they won one game the year before you transferred. So. Yeah, we actually played them. We actually played them when I was at Vermont. We played them that year that they won one game. Done. Here's the inbound. It's going to be a half-court shot to try and win it, and it goes. Towson will come away victorious. 
as for McGlynn ends the basketball game in dramatic fashion. Fun to watch still for you? Yeah, yeah I haven't I haven't watched that video. I haven't watched that video for a long time. I watch it every day if it was me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty incredible. Was that a set play? No, it wasn't. They, yeah, that was in the, the CBI. It's one of those postseason tournaments, you know, make like the, the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, it was kind of – that was kind of a tough year. We we thought we had a team that was going to go to the NCAA tournament. We lost to uh, – we lost to William & Mary. I mean, they had some really, really good players um, that are playing at some pretty high levels, you know, internationally now. So we were a little down. Um, you know, we, we played that, that USC upstate team. Um, I can't remember. I think we were losing most of the game too. And the funny thing about that is like, I actually was shooting that shot and, and shoot around earlier that morning, joking around about like, Oh, you never know. And it just kind of funny. Like it was super ironic that like, you know, we won the game and then, uh, we played a couple more games and we actually lost to, uh, we lost to Cameron Payne. Uh, when he played at Murray State before he declared for the NBA draft, uh, I think that was like two games later. But I mean, that's I mean that's a cool experience that I won't that I won't forget. Um, now I heard that you transferred and you love UVM. We're gonna have I'm gonna put you on the spot later on. I like to do that. But um, you transferred there to be closer to your family and your grandfather. But mm -hmm. there's another motive there too, wasn't there? If I'm correct on that. If, I, if you need me to remind you, you wanted your family to see your games. Is that true? Yeah, I did. Um, you know, my my parents, you know, they especially my dad, you know, he coached me in AAU. And uh, a lot of people don't know this. He was actually an assistant for my high school team. So, you know, super involved in obviously my life, but especially going to basketball games. Uh, and my grandmother's a big basketball fan. Uh, so it was tough, you know, nine, 10 hours away. It's hard to, I mean, for me, obviously I wasn't upset about it because I was still playing and obviously our games are on, you know, you can find ways to stream our games. We played a lot of games on TV when I was at Vermont. Um, but you know, my grandfather being sick and then, you know, I kind of wanted to be closer to home. Obviously we had a really good year. Went to the NCAA tournament. Uh, we won a game, um, but for me, I really wanted to be around, you know, my family and have them be able to, you know, watch me play. But also when I went to Towson, I, we had a really, really good team. So it wasn't like I was, you know, I actually went to a better basketball conference, the CAAs. Um, I don't know if I would say a lot better, but it's definitely better in terms of, you know, top to bottom than, you know, the American East, which is so, I mean, Vermont's like 13-0 and 0 this year. So it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily scary. Uh, I don't really remember. I don't really, I know that I was at a basketball camp. I got hit in the head. They thought I had a concussion. Um, but I guess I showed signs of something worse than a concussion, but I had actually been to a bunch of specialists throughout the year. You know, I had issues with my vision and headaches and um, you know, I was sleeping all the time. So I had symptoms, you know, way before, the actual incident, but they never were able to, you know, pinpoint what it was. And thankfully, um, you know, the coach at Lebanon Valley at the time, he, uh, Brad McAllister, he drove me, you know, to the hospital himself. He personally drove me, which he didn't have to do. Um, and, you know, thankfully they found it, they operated. But in terms of like, you know, like actually knowing what was going on, I woke up in the hospital, um, and then it was a really quick turnaround in terms of, you know, me waking up and then going into the procedure. So, you know, luckily I didn't have all the time in the world to contemplate, you know, the what ifs, but, you know, thankfully I came out, um, you know, I felt instantly better as soon as the surgery was over, the headaches were gone. Um, you know, so I'm grateful to coach McAllister, you know, him and my father still keep in contact now. Um, but, you know, definitely saved my life and allowed me to, you know, continue to play basketball. Yeah, I've had, you know, I've had some, I've had a lot of success, you know, since I've been in Europe. I've averaged, 
I've averaged, you know, close to 20 points almost every year, uh, except for my year in Spain, but that the Spanish basketball is a lot different. It's a lot more uh, of a system and, and guys don't play a ton of minutes. I think I was playing like 17 or 18 minutes and that was, that was pretty common for everybody. Uh, I heard that. Uh, but every other year has been, every other year has been a lot different. Um, you know, I've played over 30 minutes a game every other year. Well, I, I just switched. We're going to get into some Rhode Island. It's called a Rhode Island. Pop. Okay. And uh, like I was saying, you know, look at the teams. The word was out. You already had three great years. That's uh, so when you see the Purdue's, the Rutgers, even GW. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, what made you transfer to Rhode Island? I, I heard you wanted to play professionally. That was one of the reasons, but you might have had a few others or no. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, I love my time at Towson. Uh, but I wanted to play against – and nothing against the CAA at all. But I just wanted to play against, you know, the best of the best. And, um, you know, at that point I had already done a, enough, I think. You know, I had a 1,000 points before, you know, in three years in college. And, um, you know, I wanted to play, you know, at a really good level. Um Obviously, when I had when I was doing my you know transfer for my graduate year, uh, Coach Lonergan recruited me at, at Vermont, and then he left and went to GW. So, um, you know, I had a great relationship with him. Um, so that's why GW was was on the list. Penn State's obviously close to home, um, but when I took my visit to Rhode Island, it was a lot different. They uh, obviously I had a pre existing relationship with. Uh, coach Murray um, I didn't know coach Carr at the time but he's from York Pennsylvania um, so that was you know something we had in common then and obviously coach Hurley has you know the reputation that coach Hurley had uh, yeah and then obviously coach Cox and coach Dean um, you know coach Cox is obviously the head coach now um, I don't I don't think coach Cox was there for my my visit because of the I went in the springtime, um, but, you know, we had a, a great relationship while I was there. Obviously he's a, he's a great coach. Um, but on my visit, they, you know, they sat me down in the coach's office with a, you know, something similar to this with, you know, a PowerPoint, which, um, you know, I'd only had on one other visit. Uh, they had videos, they had, you know, where they expected me to fit in. They had projections for where, you know, Obviously, it didn't happen that way, but, you know, had the injuries not occurred, you know, what, you know, they projected we were going to do as a team. Um, and, you know, after after I'm done playing, I had expressed that I wanted to get into coaching. And there's not many staffs in the country that you go to that you can learn from that have that many coaches of such high pedigree that Rhode Island did. So that was obviously another another aspect um, of why I went there. Yeah, I was an all-star assistant coaching. Uh, yeah, it, it definitely was. Um, now, the EC dynamic with Hurley, you know, you can't mm -hmm. underscore anything more than the video after losing to Duke, and they're going through the exit to the locker rooms, and they're both hugging each other and crying. Mm -hmm. like, uh, I mean, as a fan, you know about it, but it's a little different when you're on the team they had a special relationship did that create any jealousy you know or was it just such a great relationship that that made everyone happy for both of them no i i don't it didn't it didn't cause any tension with anybody there was no there was no favoritism when it came to practice or when it came to games you know unfortunately ec only played in you know those three games the two exhibitions and and that first game against american when he got hurt um, but no, it, it was just, you just knew that it was something a little bit different about, you know, the relationship that they had, but there was never anything in, in practices or games that, you know, once we went between the lines, it was, it was just business. It didn't matter. Winning was the only thing winning and being competitive. So, I mean, you never really noticed, um, aside from the fact that, you know, EC was obviously unbelievably talented. I mean, that was 
I mean, that's just one thing you couldn't deny. And like it, if there was ever any, you know, added criticism, it was just because of, you know, how good he was. Yeah. I mean, Hurley said when he was a freshman, he's a lot of I mean, he put a lot on these players. But, uh, I think he, I think, I think barring that injury, he might have, he would have had a really good chance at, at, at that projection, which is, you know, it's unfortunate, but it happens. And, you know, thankfully for him, he's still be able to play uh, at a really high level, you know, despite all the, all of that. Uh, so it's me. There's uh, obviously our, you know, our best player is Marcus Keene. He's one of the best. I, I think he's, you know, one of the best guards I've ever seen, you know, outside of the NBA. He's just unbelievably talented offensively. Uh, he's playing in Italy right now. There's the, actually Dion Wright that played at uh, St. Bonaventure. Um, you know, Mo Creek is on this team. He played at Indiana and then played at George Washington. Um, who else was on this team? Uh, Jamel Artis played at, at uh, Pittsburgh and played for the Magic for a little bit. Um, Remy Abel played at Xavier in Indiana. Uh, you know, we had some, some really, really good players. Um, that was when, you know, COVID was not like it hasn't gone anywhere, but that's when people still didn't know a ton about it. We were actually in a bubble, um, in Ohio. A lot of people didn't know that we were getting tested every day. Uh, couldn't leave the hotel. We practiced, they built six courts inside of the hotel with weight rooms for each individual court. So you didn't interact with other teams. Um, it was, it was crazy. On to uh, another slide now, the 2015-16 season. It looks like you guys had a very competitive team, even with the EC injury. Uh, tell me about the uh, the team there that year. I mean, we, we had a 500 record going to 10 with a, as you say, a competitive uh, conference. So it seemed like you still had some good players, and then you lost to Massachusetts in the second round. You think you should have got them, or were they just uh, – too tough for them. Yeah, I definitely think we should have beat them. We I'm trying to think. We I we lost to UMass at UMass. It was a close game. We beat them at home on senior night. And I think we started the game on like a 11 or 13 over run. Um I mean UMass was they were a different different kind of team. They had uh, Trey Davis and Jabari Hines, who were like really, really talented offensively. Uh, you know, they had a great start at the Barkley Center. We didn't shoot it very well. Um, I don't know. It's tough. We had such an up and we had such an up and down year that year. Um, but I mean, it was it was a cool experience to play at the Barkley Center. Um, definitely wish we could have continued to play because. You know, even with a depleted roster, we beat Dayton when they were ranked. During that year, I heard that uh, Coach Hurley has an offer anytime he wants to be on the special teams on an NFL team, if you know where I'm going with this. Uh, uh, yeah. You have to tell me because it's not a bad thing. And uh, I think anytime a coach could motivate players, no matter what it is, it didn't seem like you were in awe of it as much as others because you played in a lot of programs, but, but – you said he had some good distance. Uh, maybe for the audience, uh, tell me uh, a little bit about what happened. I think it was turnovers happened. He was upset. There was a rack of basketball. Yeah, so I think I think at the time we were having issues with with turnovers. So he put the the rack of basketballs. It was on the sideline, and every time we turned it over, he would take a basketball off of it and if we lost every basketball throughout, you know, the practice, um, then we would have to run. I can't remember exactly what, what it is that we would run. Um, I think it was just, it was just a, especially, I don't know if it was like an especially bad practice. Like you said, like I played for, you know, my dad who was, you know, having your dad as a coach is, you know, really intense. Um, coach scary, you know, it was, re was really intense at Towson. So it doesn't, for me, it didn't like make that much of an impact because I've seen stuff like that before. 
but I just remember hearing, like, I just remember hearing the basketball and I just looked up and he had punted it into the, and yeah, the Ryan center is a big gym. You know, it's not like it seats 1500 people. Like it's, it's a big arena. And it went into the, it went into the second, you know, the second row, like the upper deck. So, you know, I don't know if he could, I don't know if he could get a call up for the NFL, but I know he's a Bengals fan. So maybe, you know, maybe when, yeah, I know he's a big Bengals fan. I see it on Instagram all the time. So, um, but I mean, it's, it's cool to have a coach. that's that, that passionate about, about basketball. I mean, all my coaches were, you know, from coach Becker to coach Gary, they, they were all passionate, but you know, coach Hurley had a different switch than, than them. And he's obviously one of the, you know, one of the all time great coaches. And I was blessed to have, you know, a really good year, obviously didn't turn out the way that we had projected it to. Um, but I learned a ton from him uh, in the year that I was there. Yeah. In the age of cell phones now, with cameras so prevalent, I would kill to see that video as well as, Many people uh, must have been. Something. I'm surprised it wasn't. I'm surprised it wasn't on video because we filmed almost every practice. But I don't know. I don't know who was responsible for that timing because I feel like that video definitely would have would still be circulating had uh, had they recorded that. Well, I have an offer for you after the season. Let's meet up in Kingston and see if we can hunt down a video. What do you think about? That? <laughs> Maybe I could talk to some people that were. Uh, that were there and, and see if they have any uh, idea where it might be. About some games, the TCU game was a big game for you. You want to mention that? And there's a few other games I'm going through for record. But it was an eventful season, lots of great uh, games. But you mentioned Cancun and TCU, and then, of course, Maryland. What happened in those games? Yeah, I mean, that's – I mean, just looking at it now, that's a good – that's a really good schedule. TCU and Maryland were cool because it was it was my first time playing. Obviously, I played in the NCAA tournament, but you know, you watch those those challenges like the battle for Atlantis and stuff. Um, you watch those like, and you always want to play in you know tournaments like that on TV. You know, Cancun was just it was beautiful. Uh, we got there and beat TCU was really good. You know, they played in the Big Twelve. That was a I mean that was a big win. Um, I mean, Maryland, we thought, you know, Maryland, we thought we were going to be competitive. You know, I mean, it's six years ago, but, you know, I think we, at that time, EC was hurt, but we still had, everybody else was healthy. You know, we thought we had a really good team. They were just unbelievably talented. They had size. They had, I mean, they had everything. They were really, that was probably one of the better, better teams I've played against in college. Um well, then there was a heartbreaker against Providence, buzzer beater. Happened. Yeah, the tip in, the tip in. That one was that one was tough. We uh, we played we played really well that game. Obviously, they're they're really good. That was one of my most memorable games. Obviously, I didn't play I didn't play well in that game, but the atmosphere was was crazy. You know, Vermont sold out every game, but to sell out in you know, and no knock on Ellen Patrick gym because that's a great place to play. But there's a difference selling that gym out and then selling the Ryan Center out. And how passionate the people are is it's it was unbelievable. Yeah, uh, but we know, all know it's not a rivalry, uh, as they say or he says. But I, yeah, I feel like I see that every year that Providence says that it's not a rivalry. But I need to get over it. I've been on Twitter. And then, of course, there's the Brown game. I think you had five players, scholarship players. I think, and, and you still managed. Yeah, five or six. Five or six. EC was out. Haas was out with a – can't remember. I know Karan had a concussion. Uh, and that's the thing, too. People don't, people don't appreciate the value that, or the talent that is, like, the Ivy League teams have. Like, they had some really good players. Like, they have – they are guys that are still that are still playing professionally. Um, I mean, obviously, it's not like you know, it's not the same as beating like a Big Twelve, like a TCU or like you know Houston. You know, after the run they just had in you know the NCAA tournament, you know, last year or two years ago. I mean, but it's still a good win, especially given you know what we came into the game with. Yeah, this is the four degrees of separation. What do you think? Uh, 
I did some homework you mentioned, Leary. Um, mm -hmm. What's the connections here? I, I guess we covered it all, but like, like you said, it is a small world. And uh, Larry was on your dad's uh, AAU team or something else. Yeah, yeah, he played for he played for my dad's AAU team. Um, I've actually I haven't been around as much. I've played the last the last two summers, and then I was in India for a summer, uh, so I haven't been around for uh, you know as many tournaments as you know I normally would be. But you know he was he was really talented. Um, I took him on his visit. And he loved it. I mean, obviously it's, it's hard. I know Kingston's small, but it's hard to not enjoy, enjoy a visit up there. Um, you know, I was really happy to be back, even though it was only a couple hours. Um, I think he's a redshirt freshman. So, you know, he's still got three more years. Who knows? Maybe four, depending on what happens with COVID, if they keep giving out eligibility. What do you think of him as a player? He looks like he has a lot of talent. He's a freak athlete, right? Yeah, he's got a he's got a really high upside. Um, you know, he I think he was he was a little raw, and obviously he was, you know, in terms of the A10, you're playing against, you know, grown men, especially now that they're giving out eligibility. Guys are older, they're stronger. So um, I know he had a red shirt year. You know, he got he put on a lot of muscle so you know I think if he just continues to develop he'll be a good player I mean you can't teach that kind of athleticism and then if you put some some extra skill with it you know he can be you know a really good player you know he's just playing behind you know the Mitchell twins who are obviously really good and uh Walker who I don't he might not be a four but he's like a three four you know, depending on the lineups and he's obviously really good as well so you know it's just about you know buying your time he got some play, though, and, you know, if the Mitchell twins get into foul trouble like they did against PC, he was on the court in the Duncan uh, Center. So we may be seeing a little more. Here's these urban myths or legends of what's true and what's not. First of all, this picture is precious. Are you – this guy looks like he's going to be crying. He's crying right there because you're putting moves on him. Did you light him up or something? Uh, that was it. That's fine. That's at a, like one of the, the starting tournaments of like the season. I, that, that was like my, that might've been my senior year actually. Oh, you, he didn't have a good, I haven't, I'm just teasing. No, we, no, we beat, I think we beat them pretty bad. We were really good my senior year. Oh, well, here's, is this true? You got yelled at by a Portuguese fan. And they translated it, and you didn't believe the translation. Did that happen? I think that's happened more than once. That's kind that's of happened more than once. Yeah, I mean, the, the translation stuff is so hard, though, because even like some of my teammates that that speak English, it's broken English. So when they translate stuff, it doesn't necessarily align to what was actually trying to be said. Now, if I'm getting yelled at and they translate it, I probably am more likely to believe the the translation than if it was just something in, you know, like passing communication. But I've definitely had issues with translations before. So that's that's accurate. Yeah. Well, we you had such a big response from the fans. A lot of questions came in when they found out that I was uh, interviewing you today. And one person mentioned a fan. He used to shout out four for three. Is that when you hit a three? Is that a thing, or is that just something? That was a thing. That was that was something that the announcer used to say when I was at when I was at Vermont. That was like a. He said that every time I made a three. Okay. All right. And then uh, this one is a tough question. People are very proud of Rhode Island. It's obviously a gorgeous school. It's up by the beach. Mm -hmm. I want to know what's prettier. Vermont or URI? What's a prettier? I know that's a tough, mm, that's a tough question. Get back to me on that. Uh, but no, I mean, honestly, like I've, you know, I, I love my time at URI. It is a beautiful campus. Um, but Vermont's, Vermont's appeal is that it's small. So, you know, in terms of, you know, like the, the beaches at Rhode Island, you have to take a ferry, you have to drive, you know, a, 
15, 20 minutes. Vermont, like you could go, you leave the gym and make one turn and you can see the lakes and everything. Um, it's one of the most beautiful campuses I've, I've ever seen, I think. I have to agree with you, but uh, I'm going to call it a tie for political reasons. Uh, call, that makes sense. We can call it a tie. Um, here's another one. You're going to think I'm nuts on this one, but do you happen to have a beer in your house right now, in your refrigerator? No, I don't. No, I do not. Is there a urban myth or legend that um, you can chug a beer with the best of them? Is that true? I know some kids are on the phone. I mean, maybe back, maybe back in my college days. I don't know about it now. Well, I didn't warn you about that to get you ready for that, but that would have been fun if you do have one of those uh, hallmark uh, beer chugging uh, techniques. And then what about this one? When the PA announcer screams for, do we all have to duck? That's another one of the fans. Little bit I mean, when I maybe when when I retire from basketball, I've always said I wanted to get into golf. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's a thing. I always feel like that's a thing that that basketball players get into. So maybe when I'm done playing, if somebody screams for you, might you might have to duck. But I think everybody's safe for now. Okay. Well, I, I promise to get as many questions, and uh, going to get you on here now, wrapping things up. I really appreciate you coming up. A lot of stuff I think you um. But to finish up, what's your impressions of this year's team, uh, Rhode Island? It's a good time to ask you that question after yesterday's game. I was, I'm was, i still blowing. I, when Rhode Island loses, I don't have enough dopamine or serotonin in my system. I take it hard. <laughs> I feel yeah, I mean, it's uh, – for I mean, for me, it's tough. You know, with the, with being six hours ahead, most of those games are, are really late here. Um so usually what I do is I go on, you know, I go on Twitter, I go on, you know, go roadie and look at, you know, the box scores. I look at obviously with social media, it's, it's hard like we talked about because everybody's got an opinion. Um, but I look at, you know, some of the comments and I see stuff, you know, I think they're good. Like they have, you know, from the last, I know the guys that are back from last year, like the Mitchells, uh, Carrie's back, Carrie Carney, uh, the transfer from Syracuse. He played a lot of minutes yesterday. Um, yeah, and I know he has. I know his numbers haven't been great. I don't think from what I saw, but I mean, he played at Syracuse, so you know you don't go to a school like that without talent. You know, obviously Walker is good. Uh, Haas's little brother is really good. You know, I think he plays. I actually watched him last year. You know, he plays really hard on both ends of the floor, which a lot of people don't don't do anymore. You know, there's something to be said for people who are still a two-way player. Um, Shepard, I like Shepard, the the transfer from ECU. He's good. Um, I don't know that people don't understand. Also, the A10 is the A10 is not a an easy conference to play in. You know, obviously, people are accustomed to winning. You know, especially after these last few years at Rhode Island. So, to have a to not meet people's expectations is hard when they're so passionate about basketball, but like those guys are like, those players are good. Like, it's not like they go out there and want to lose games. You know, sometimes they, the team shoot better. Sometimes, you know, stuff happens and, you know, there's ups and downs of every season, but you know, when it comes to March, you know, you know, they beat a top 25 team in Davidson, you know, they've been competitive with almost everybody. So you never know what's going to happen. You just have to, you know, obviously be good but like college basketball especially in you know this year i don't know if the a10 will be a, a too big conference that's kind of up in the air from what i'm seeing everywhere but if it's if it's not you never know what happens in the tournament so you know i think they've got a chance to beat anybody you know the fans just have to stick with them and you know it's it's hard it's it's hard to say that because i understand how passionate those fans are but, you know, at the same time, it's not like those kids don't go out there and want to lose games. You know, like they they practice they practice every day. I know Coach Cox definitely has them practicing hard uh, because I know he's really passionate from, you know, the even the year I had with him as an assistant. Um, I mean, they'll, they'll – what was that? Make a segue into Coach Cox. What was it like playing with him? I know he's an assistant and it's different as a head coach, but you seem to like uh... – him as a coach playing for him 
Yeah, I was a big fan of Coach Cox. Um, you know, obviously, my relationships are different than people are there for four years. But, I mean, I was embraced by everybody on the staff. Um, you know, especially him. With with him being an assistant was was a little different because the message is that he would say, you know, Coach Hurley is, you know, coaching a team during games. You know, the assistants are on the bench and have more one-on-one personal conversations with players about what's going on. Um, but I mean, he was always supportive of me and, you know, he always told me to shoot the ball. So I can never not enjoy hearing that. And he's had good teams, but like I said, the 8-10 is, is not, is, you know, when we're talking about, you know, Vermont, that's a one big conference and you almost, for the most part, you know, who's coming out of there, especially their 13 and 0, unless something, you know, drastic happens. The A-10 is one of those ones you follow, you know, John Rothstein or other guys on Twitter. It's so volatile and unpredictable that, you know, it's hard to it's hard to win. And it's also hard to win the conference tournament because everybody's playing, you know, their best basketball. So, you know, I think they have a shot. Hopefully, you know, everything just comes together for them, you know, and they start clicking at the right time and figure it out um, by the time the tournament comes. I think so too. And considering the fact that they're 10 deep sometimes and mm-hmm. double by, maybe they could get three games. You're going to need some legs. Uh, maybe they'll be, there's some teams that are like five deep, like on a venture. But if they play epic level defense and uh, instill their will on the court, they could win their life and confidence and make it. And it, it sounds crazy, but remember Fordham beat Rhode Island right before the, the tournament the next year after you graduated? It was a really tough loss. And then they went on and they won the national, the uh, Atlantic 10 tournament. The, yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing, too. You got two high major players in the Mitchell Twins, and you got Haas's brother who def- who they all three, you know, defend. And I, I'm not saying everybody else doesn't, but, you know, those guys, you know, especially Haas's brother in the, I can't remember. I can't remember which twin it is, but one of them is, isn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, yeah. Makai. Yep. He was right. So, you know, you put together, you put together three or four good games, depending on buys with guys that can defend, you know, anything can happen in, in the tournament. And uh, this is a big question. You're since you're the, uh, all-time eighth best foul shooter in the NCAA. I like to say that. I'd be very proud of that. Um, what What's happening with the foul shooting? To me, you can't coach foul shooting. And Coach Cox said something. It starts to get contagious when when I'm seeing Jeremy Shepard, a 90% foul shooter, missing shots. And even Haas, his brother, uh, Malik. What, what's your take on this? And they shot really well last night. Um, that's probably probably why they won the biggest reason. What's your take on that? Their pals? I mean, it's just a, it's just a mental thing. I think, you know, for guys like, for me, I never had this, I never really had this issue, but I know for a lot of guys, it's, it's a mental thing. You know, they don't want to get, you, know, you see some guys, it gets to the extent where when they get fouled, they, you, they get flustered and their body language just diminishes I don't know. I think a lot of guys, you can say like, oh, you can get, you know, a ton of reps and some people shoot themselves out of slumps, you know, but for other people, you know, it could be about, you know, redirecting that focus to something else. You know, instead of like thinking about, oh, I might miss these free throws, you know, like sometimes like now, if I'm, you know, shooting free throws at the end of the game, I'll like look in the stands or like, I'll talk to somebody on the foul line before I shoot them. That way I'm not, I mean, I don't really get nervous, but I'm not necessarily as worried about it. I mean, everybody's everybody's philosophy is different. I just think you have to figure out a way to to change your mental narrative on on free throws because it's it's not like the guys can't shoot. Yeah. You know, like you said, Shepard shoots ninety percent. It's not like he can't make free throws, but also missing is it's a part of basketball. Like nobody shoots hundred percent for you know, for an entire season. It's just about regrouping after the misses that support. Some guys let it get to them and affect them for not only the next shot, but maybe the next time they get fouled. Um, so just changing the focus on that is is probably something that's important too. And then you, you get Mikel, who was uh, 
shooting 70% earlier in the season. And I look at both Mikel and Makai, and I like their form, but I'm not the one to judge. You're, you're the foul shooting uh, record holder. What about their form? I see some, they have some soft touch when they make those shots. They were, what, what do you think? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, it's the same thing as, as Shepard, you know, so for a big 70% isn't, isn't bad. Like that's a decent percentage. Um, and you know, I watched, I watched them play. I watched them play somebody. They played a big 12 team last year that I watched. Ne- Nebraska, maybe, or Wisconsin. Um, Wisconsin, that was a COVID game. I think that, that was a great opportunity for them. They were playing yeah, I, so I watched that game. And, like, they – I mean, they have good form. You know, some – I don't like to – I don't like to make excuses, but a lot of times, like, if you, depending on where you play, the basketball is make a difference. Mm-hmm. Really? You know, like, you know, you could go to sh- – yeah, you could go to shoot around for an hour, but it's way different than, you know, Rhode Island's and Adidas team in – you play with an Adidas basketball every day for months on end. You got to go to, you know, I don't know, VCU, that's a Nike basketball where um, like St. Bonaventure plays with the Wilson basketball. So some people can't adjust quickly to that either. And that also plays a factor in, in free throw percentage, I think, because for me, I didn't, I never had issues with making shots, but I also like, I had a hard time sometimes with like feeling comfortable shooting with certain basketballs. That's what I love about these interviews. I would never would have known that nor many of our listeners today. I never would have thought about that. That's, that's really interesting that you say that. And it might be a personal thing, but I mean, I might be a little weird, but you know, for me, like I, I can't stand the Nike basketballs. I always had a hard time with, yeah, with feeling comfortable, like playing at St. Louis or, I mean, even at Dayton, I shot well at Dayton when we play there. But I mean, it's something about the the different like panels of the basketball sometimes is is hard to adjust to. Not saying that that's the reason people miss free throws or make free throws, but you know, mentally for me, it had you know, it was it was a different aspect, especially in row games. Wow. Well, four, you didn't disappoint. I've seen you on podcasts before, and. Uh, this was a really special one. I'm, I'm thinking 300 to 500 views. By the way, there's a women's game on now on ESPN Plus. The Rhode Island ladies Rams have a 13 or going for the 13th straight victory. They're having a phenomenal season. They're having a really good year. I'm on the bandwagon. I love the, both teams. So, yeah. But once again, don't be a stranger. We'll coordinate our flight. We get that video from Hurley. And uh, <laughs> again, for taking the time getting up early and uh, good luck with the rest of your season. Four. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun. I did too. Well, see you soon and uh, we'll, we'll see you in Kingston. All right. See ya.